Welcome to our second tutorial. Last time we saw the pretreatment evaluation. Now we are going to evaluate the final position. It is very important that whenever I'm evaluating the final position to always have the photos of the patient at our side. We want to see how those movements are affecting that patient smile. So for example, in here we have a deep bite and I'm making intrusion of those upper and lower incisors. So in here, if the patient has a gummy smile, this intrusion that we are performing is going to actually help us to reduce that gummy smile. But if that upper lip is already covering too much those upper incisors, I don't want to intrude them because that will affect the smile. So in that case, I will just focus on making intrusion from that lower canine to the other lower canine. When we are checking this final position, it's not only important to check that position at the end, but also how I am fixing that initial situation. So for any condition, there are several ways on how we can improve them. That is why we are going to make a quick summary on normally the different ways on how we address to those clinical situations. So crowding is the most frequent one. So we can see in here that this upper lateral is lingually. So we need a space over here to be able to move it vocally. So when we are treating a crowding case, we are going to have five different ways on how we can treat that patient. So the five most common ways on how we can treat crowding will be expansion, lingual root torque that is the same as proclination, IPR, distalization, and extractions. So these last two, we leave it for cases where we have six, eight millimeters of crowding or more. The three that we see here at the top are the ones that we are always going to try to use first, but we need to be the ones who tell the technician what we want to accomplish and how we want to accomplish it. So in this case, as you can see, we are creating that space for these two laterals by making expansion movements. We didn't perform IPR and we didn't procline too much. It was mainly expansion to create that space. When we want to improve the posterior or canine relationship, there are several ways on how we can accomplish that. So, for example, distalization, but it's important that whenever we do distalization to evaluate if we have a space in the back. So, a lot of times we need to extract the third molars before the treatment. Also, we can perform posterior IPR that normally is going to be used for the canine relationship. Missialization that is a little bit harder than distalization because we need to create a space before we start to missialize. Also, we can do extraction of premolars or a virtual bite jump. It is important that the virtual bite jump will be a simulation of what the elastics are going to do on that patient. So to see the amount of jump, we just need to go to the final position and then we move to simulation and we make a click. And that is going to show the jump that we are performing. It is important that this is not going to happen in just one stage. It will happen during the whole treatment. And this result that you may see here is going to vary depending on the age of the patient, the amount of movement that we are trying to accomplish, and also the compliance. So we should also always check if we have anterior contacts. Those anterior contacts normally are going to create a posterior open bite at the end of the treatment. So normally we can solve it by doing lower IPR. We can leave spaces for restorations on the upper arch and that will increase the overjet or we can do a lower incisor extraction. And normally that space is closed really well with the aligners. So for example, in a case just like this one, when we have a very tight overjet, then one thing that we can do is just to add IPR between canine to canine or if we see the laterals are too small compared to the centrals or the canines, then we can open a space around them to place veneers at the end. So after we verify how the technician solved the crowding, the AP relationship, the spacing, 
empty by open bytes or any other condition we are going to check the arc shape the leveling the torque and the angulations so we go and we select the arch that we want to examine first we select the grid and in here we can see for example okay centrals are at the same level but maybe I will extrude more the canine so that is some change that I'm going to ask in a comment or in here in the lower arch I want to see how is that curve of spin I can see it from the front and also from the side so that is something else that I want to check then I want to check the arch shape normally we want an ovoid arch shape and also as a rule normally the distance between upper first molar to upper first molar from lingual surface will be around 35 to 39 millimeters so that is also something that I can check in here I want to see the angulations so crowns should always be going towards Michel and roots towards distal so that is something else that I'm going to verify in here so for example this second molar on the upper right side I will do a little bit more angulation I will do crown towards Michel and root towards distal and then I will check the torque so those upper incisors normally will be with a positive torque around 6-7 degrees and those lower incisors normally will be almost straight or even minus 1 degrees and the posterior teeth normally will have a torque that is negative going inside so all of these things I will need to check and finally we finish by checking the occlusogram we just go select the arch and see that those contacts are almost the same so for example in here I see that this third molar has a heavy occlusal contact and also this molar and this premolar so I have two options or to tell the technician to leave heavy occlusal contacts in all posterior teeth or to make these heavy occlusal contacts disappear so I want to thank you all for joining us and I hope to see you in the next video thanks